Hello Servants Church and welcome to our Boxing Day service. Um, we hope you are warm and well fed and uh, have had a wonderful Christmas. Um, yeah, we're m meeting today to worship our God. Um, we don't just worship on Christmas Day. Um, yeah, so we're going to sing a song. And um, yeah, join in, us, join in with us when you can. Servants Church. Thank you for joining us online. Um, I've got a, uh, a quick prayer that I'm going to pray for the service and then a few announcements that I'll make um, afterwards. So please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today's service where we celebrate that Christmas is for everyone. I pray for your spirit to embolden us over this holiday period to gracefully share your gospel with those around us who have not yet received your free gift of salvation. And we pray for the many countries around the world where Christmas is not a cultural tradition and where believers will be celebrating quietly in their homes. May they know your peace and presence. And as COVID news circulates, I pray that your church will not be ruled by fear of worldly affairs, but that the remarkable <clears throat> truth of your birth, life, death and resurrection will be our rest and peace. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, we have some announcements. Um, I think this is them. Let's have a look. Right. 
So, dear Santa, this Christmas, because I've been over 50% good this year... No, I, this is Theo's wish list for Father Christmas here. Ah, here they are. So, um, uh, announcements this week. Uh, the new teaching series, One Another begins on the 2nd of January, so that's Sunday the 2nd of January, and the theme is now or how we know and share God's love through our relationships. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure we'll have that finished by the end of the decade. And uh, then toddler groups, youth group and home groups all begin again on January the 3rd. So that's January the 3rd for all of the, the small groups and the community groups. Well, that's all from me. I uh, wish you a very happy Christmas and a very happy new year. So Sarah, what are we going to do next today? I'm glad you asked Rory. We are going to sing some songs. So if you haven't had any coffee this morning, it's too late. You've got to get up, you've got to move. We're going to talk about how Jesus is number one, and it's going to connect later to all the different things we're going to be learning about Jesus. He's many, many things, but he's definitely number one. Yes, so it's time to get off your sofa, time to work off that Christmas belly from yesterday, because we are going to sing, we are going to dance, and we're going to do some praising of the Lord. Is that right? Yep. Go for it. <laughs> for you guys to play at home today okay so you guys can do this with your parents later but for now John and I are gonna have a go it's called who am I and we have to try to guess who each other are without looking at the picture so John's gonna go first okay so I've got a picture that we're gonna put on his forehead and you can't look at the camera no cheating so 
go for it. Ask me some questions. Am I a man? Yes. <clears throat> okay, uh, am I a powerful man? Yes. Okay, am I a king? No. Am I a fireman? No. Uh, am I uh, like a, an athlete? Kind of, yes. Okay. <clears throat> am I a superhero? Yes. Am I Batman? No. I'm Batman. No. Am I Superman? Yay. Okay, I'll so it's that. my turn now to see if Sarah can guess or answer the question, who am I? Close your eyes. My eyes are closed. My eyes are closed. Am I a woman? No. Am I a man? Well, duh. <laughs> I take it that's a yes. Okay. Am I um, powerful? No. <laughs> Am I a cartoon character? No. Am I a real life person? Yes. Am I... Um, Am I, am I strong? Not really. Okay. Am I? Uh, That's not what you're, you're not known for your strength. Uh, do I know this person? You do. Oh, is it one of my family members? No. Is it a friend? S yes. Um... Okay, is this friend someone that I live with? No. Is this someone that I work with? Yes. Do I know them from church? If you work with them, you know them from church. <laughs> I'm not very good at this. No. no. <laughs> okay, um, is it Ben, lad? No. Is it Rory? Yes, that's the only other option. It's Rory. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to do round two. It's up for me. I get to go first. Ah, oh, okay. Since I won both of those. Oh, I'm just really bad at this. Okay. Okay. Right. Am I a woman? No. Am I a man? Yes. Is it somebody that I know? No. I'm a man. Am I a cartoon character? Yes, you are. Oh, okay. Am I... And I'm a... I'm a woman. Cartoon no. No, I'm a man cartoon <laughs> character. <laughs> I can't remember. Am I um, Spongebob? No. Um, I better narrow this down. <sighs> Am I Wiley Coyote? No. <laughs> Don't know my bugs funny. <laughs> Shall I give you? Shall I give her a hint? <laughs> you can do it. Or should I give her a better hint? No, no, no. Can she do it? Can he do it? Yes, he can. Bob the Builder. Yeah, finally. <laughs> so you guys can play this at home with your moms and dads. And the reason why we did this game is just to kind of be silly with the fact that we are definitely not strong like Superman or um, I'm definitely not Rory. No. I think. It's a little long. I I've got brown hair, not ginger. And I'm definitely not, who was the other person? Oh, Bob the Builder. I can't really build things. So, so because those things don't really describe us, do they? But they're fun. We had a lot of fun doing it, even though I was absent-minded and I'm not very good at this game. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, is that you guys know that Jesus, who has all these wonderful names, he's a whole bunch of different things like Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, he's the Everlasting Father, he is the King of Kings, he's Lord of Lords, and all of those names that describe Jesus are true, and they fit him exactly. So I hope you guys have fun today, enjoy the rest of your day, enjoy some eating and fun and food with your family, and we'll see you guys all again next Sunday. And don't forget, I won.
When sin entered the world after Adam and Eve rebelled, God made an important promise. God promised a rescuer would come from Eve's family. As years passed, God's people waited for him to keep his promise. God sometimes spoke to his people through prophets and prophetesses, men and women who received a message from God and then told it to the people. The prophet Isaiah shared a message about God's promise to send a rescuer. The rescuer would be called the Messiah, which means anointed one or chosen one. This is what Isaiah wrote. The people are living in darkness now, but they will see a great light. A light will shine on them. God will grow the nation and give the people joy. People will rejoice like they do at harvest time or after a war is won. This is how God will keep his promise. A child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. All these names tell us who Jesus is and the great things that he would do. Jesus was coming to earth to help people and to protect people. Jesus would be a king who cares about his people, and he would bring peace to the whole world. Isaiah also said, his kingdom will be full of his power and peace. The kingdom will grow and he will reign on the throne as the king. He will be a good, fair, and loving king who reigns forever. God keeps his promises. He remembered his promise to send a rescuer and sent his son Jesus into the world as a baby. Jesus grew up and provided salvation for sinners by dying on the cross and rising from the dead. Little Christmas, so have your.
herself a merry little Christmas No. Um, no, I don't think so, because then it would make it less special <laughs> when you do have it. <laughs> uh, no, most days, but not every day. Why would you? What would, that's like um, when I was a child, everything was seasonal. You got tangerines at Christmas, you got strawberries in summer, and the shame of it is that you can get all that every day of the week now. Why would you want Christmas every day of the week to spoil it? <laughs> Um, not really, no. I think it'd be a bit much, really, yeah. Uh, if Christmas was that, every day, it wouldn't be special anymore. Okay. Uh, not every day. I could probably do, like, a, maybe a Christmas a month at a push, if I really wanted to. But, like, if you had a Christmas a day, just, like, logistically, it would be really irritating. I put a lot of thought into this question when I was a kid. Uh, like, you'd have to get a lot of presents, and there'd just be so much food and stuff. Again, you've got the fact that it takes away from like something that's special. Uh, Absolutely not. No. Ah, <laughs> uh, it just feels a bit too much to have it every day. It's quite tiring, quite energetic, you know. Uh, too much, yeah, family drama. Too so yeah, food. yeah one, once a month maybe, that'd be like perfect amount. If it wasn't so expensive, yes. But otherwise at the moment, no. <laughs> It's too much. Uh, to spoil the specialness of it, it's, it's all about once a year, just the you know special time of year, and that it wouldn't be special, would it, if it was every if it was every day? So, no, I wouldn't. No. Like I've worked in retail for a long time. I'm not a very Christmassy person anymore. So, if you have something every day, it's not special anymore. And um, we've got to a stage where we can have almost everything all of the time on our doorsteps, in our laps, in our lounges. And I think a lot of the magic's gone out of the world because of that. I think there's a time and a place for everything. Oh, too much money. It's too much money. I know too many people I want to buy presents for. So it's too much money. But if it was cheaper, absolutely. I'd say yes and no. I mean, well, when I, well, for Christmas for me, it's like all my, the majority of my family come together. So I'd rather want a reunion more, but not Christmas all the time. I think Christmas is really special. And if you have it every day, then you're going to use that, lose that sense of what a special time it is. It would just become something ordinary. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because, like, what do we get presents? We get presents every day, yeah. And have fun with our family. Yeah, and have fun with family. <laughs> I wouldn't want Christmas every day because I think that uh, part of the reason that Christmas is so special is that it only comes once a year and you really get a build up uh, and all that excitement kind of culminating on the on the 25th itself so I I would keep it as it is once a year. So I would not want Christmas every day, in fact I think maybe we should only have it every fifth year and then people would appreciate it more. I can't add to that, what she said, <laughs> <laughs> on this occasion I agree entirely. <laughs> No, I'd say it's special just for like once, one time. I would absolutely agree and I would just add that it would turn into a complete nightmare because it takes a whole month to prepare for this one day and I don't know how you would cope if it was every single day. I think I'd lose my mind quite quickly. There's only so many mince pies you can eat in a year. I don't know, I quite like the idea of like feeling, the feeling you get on Christmas Day or like leading up to it. And I think I, that would be quite a nice feeling if you could feel it all the time. But then it makes it less special to have Christmas because it's kind of like you're waiting the whole year to build up to this one special occasion where, you, like you said, like, you know, you get to see all your family and you like, it's just a celebration. But yeah. No, I don't think I would like Christmas every day. <laughs> yeah. Solid day once a year, not a solid day throughout the year multiple times.
everyone. It's time for Big Questions with... Solomon. And Philip. <laughs> and today's question comes from Nathaniel. I would like to ask Philip and Solomon a big question. Would you like to celebrate Christmas every day? So, Nathaniel, that's a good question. I would like to know if Solomon wants to celebrate Christmas every day, and I have an opinion myself. But first, we have a special guest. Solomon, introduce our special guest, please. I would like to introduce to you my friend, Jimmy Fluffy Bear. Yay, welcome to the show, Jimmy. <laughs> so, Jimmy, tell us, would you want Christmas every day? Yes, I would want it every day because I would love to have presents and I would also love to be with my family. Oh, oh that sounds good. I like presents and I definitely love my family. In fact, speaking of presents, yesterday at Christmas, Solomon gave me this lovely black tie. Thank you, Solomon. <laughs> You're welcome. I hope you like it. I do like it. Thank you very much for that black tie. Uh, um, I actually asked for jelly beans, but black pies are <laughs> good too. I bought it at um, Georgia, Asda. Very, <laughs> very stylish. Good choice. So Solomon, Jimmy's given us his answer. What about your answer? Would you want Christmas every day? I think it would be great to have it every day. But it would be nice to be with family every day because they may live really lot far away from us. And if it was every day, they'd be here every day. Mmm, that sounds good. You know, that reminds me of, it kind of reminds me of heaven. Because in heaven, we'll all be together every day. And heaven will feast with Jesus every day. In heaven, it's going to be wonderful. So all the best bits of Christmas we get in heaven. Especially Jesus. So I think I'd want to celebrate Christmas every day as well. I think it would get very expensive for our moms and dads to have to pay for Christmas every day, but it would be nice to remember who Jesus is and what he did for us and why he was born. Hey, actually, maybe we can celebrate Christmas every day. What do you think, Solo? Well, that is true. We can celebrate Jesus' birth every day. If we um, read about it, and if we pray about it, and if we think about it. I agree. In fact, Jesus paid for all of our sin, and he did enough to make sure we could be in heaven with him forever. That's the best present ever. Don't you think so, Jimmy? And I think that we should have fun learning about God every day. And I think we should also read our Bible every day. Until then, we just hope we can have time with Jesus every day in 2022. So should we say Happy New Year 2022 to everyone? You ready? Oh. One, two, three. Happy 2022! And Boxing Day. And Boxing Day. And I hope that you will have a big and nice good old New Year. On 2022! I agree. Couldn't say it better myself, Jimmy. Bye, everyone! Bye! No, 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 Happy Boxing Day, Servants Church. So glad you guys could be here with us today. We hope you've enjoyed the, the online service so far. I, I, I'm wondering at this point, on Boxing Day, after all the food and the festivities of yesterday, if you're wishing Christmas was every day. I, I, I kind of predict that maybe if you're uh, young and you, you didn't actually pay for Christmas, you just had to kind of show up and enjoy everything, you're thinking, yeah, Christmas every day sounds great. But maybe if you're older like me and there's the expense and the logistical plan that had to go into it, you're thinking, I don't know, I don't think Christmas every day is a good idea. And I, and I think this is kind of how we look at life. In fact, I think we're kind of programmed to think good things, peace, prosperity, abundance, family coming together, that that stuff, well, it just, it can't last forever. And then who can blame us? 
one of the things that we look at is when we look at the state of the world, we see there's a lot of things that, well, just they aren't that good. I was looking at an international development site this uh, week, and I noticed that uh, some really disturbing news that since the pandemic started, we have an additional 50 million people in extreme poverty. And not only that, I, I read in an article recently uh, from the New York Times that, that, that said that, that we've only had 8% of human history that's known peace, that's been a time without war. It's almost as if we, we, we've kind of been programmed or we've, our experience has told us that the best it's going to get is one good day once in a while. And I can imagine that this idea, this idea that things aren't always going to be good is something that was really beginning to hit the Israelites about 700 years before the time of Christ. In Isaiah chapter 8, Isaiah has, has given a really kind of dark, gloomy prediction that, that Israel was about to go into captivity, that the, uh, another nation, the Assyrians, would overtake them and, and oppress them and take them out of their land, and it would be a day of gloom. But even right after that, right after Isaiah gives this gloomy prophecy, it's as if God wants to make sure his people know that the gloom is actually what isn't permanent, that there's a hope that is permanent and it's coming soon. Here's what uh, Isaiah writes in Isaiah chapter 9. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish in the former time when he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they, are, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and, and the staff of his shoulder and the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling warrior in the battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. So Isaiah gives this prophecy. After announcing there's going to be a day of gloom, he gives this prophecy that that gloom will not last forever. And he uses a scriptive language that talks about peace and prosperity, talks about the end of war. In fact, when he says, the people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light, Matthew in the New Testament, Matthew's gospel, says that Jesus fulfills that when he begins his ministry. But think about some of these other descriptions quickly. He, he talks about how that they're going to rejoice, Israel, God's people are going to rejoice with a joy as at harvest. In other words, feeling the prosperity as when, when, when you have more than you can possibly need. And then also he talks about this, this being a time when the rod of his oppressor would have been broken as on the day of Midian. And that's a reference to a time when God delivered Israel through supernatural means. And even this reference to every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. It's as if that the prophecy is saying there's going to come a time when even the, the remnants of war, the evidence of war's past will be burned out, burned up, excuse me, and become something useful, redeemed as something useful like fuel for the fire. And what's really interesting about this prophecy, and this is what connects to Christmas, is what he says in the next verses, in verses 6 and 7. Isaiah writes in, in chapter 9, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now, what's interesting about this is that 
He's saying to us, Isaiah is saying to his people, to the Israelites, he's saying to them, and the Spirit would say to us, that the promise of peace and prosperity that would someday last and increase forever, that's connected to this, this child that's given, or this child that's, that's born, to the son that's given. It's connected to Jesus, who would be God's chosen king, the Messiah, or the Christ. Now, what I want to focus on in, in the little minute time that we have together this morning is these four names, these four phrases that described who Jesus would be and described why in him we can expect prosperity and peace to eventually last forever. So let's quickly go through these things. The first thing he's called, Isaiah says, that he will be called Wonderful Counselor. In other words, what he says will always come to pass. And this is exactly what Jesus said about his own words. Jesus says this in Mark chapter 13, verse 31, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. He, he, he goes on to say in Matthew chapter 7, he talks about the, the reality that when he says his words, he's not just talking about things that we hear, listen to, uh, like the wisdom of, but words that we're meant to build our lives on. Listen to this. Jesus says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. In other words, what makes Jesus the wonderful counselor is not just that his words will always come to pass, but that we can build our lives on the foundation of of who he is and what he says. We build our lives on that as we do what he says. He's the wonderful counselor. His counsel is worth following. But also, Isaiah says he's the mighty God. What does that mean? It means that what he did, only God could do. We see this in, in, in when he has power over creation. Jesus and his disciples are in a boat. This big storm comes up. These seasoned fishermen with Jesus are scared. This is it. They end their lives. Jesus says just plainly, peace be still, be still. And the storm stops. And the disciples, they're filled with great fear. And they said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Who has power over creation but the creator God? There's another time when we see Jesus in his ministry that all evening they brought to Jesus many who were oppressed by demons. And he casts out the spirit with a word and he healed all who were sick. Who can do this? Who has authority over demons and over sickness? But God himself. Another time when Jesus' good friend Lazarus is, is found out to be dead. Jesus and his disciples go to, to the place where he's been buried, and Jesus knows exactly what he's doing, and he looks at the tomb, and he says, Lazarus, he cries out, Lazarus, come out. And his friend Lazarus, who had died, uh, came out. His hands and feet were still bound in the linen strips, and his face was still wrapped in this cloth because he was buried almost mummified, as they would in that day. And Jesus says, hey, unbind him and let him go. In other words, Jesus resurrected him from the dead. Who else can have authority over death but God himself? And lastly, one of the things that we see about him being mighty God is, is seen when he heals a man who is a paralytic. That is, he's paralyzed. And the man was lowered through the roof. You guys probably know this story. And Jesus first says to the man, your sins are forgiven. And the religious people there are like, wait, how can he say his sins are forgiven. And who does he think he is? Only God that can forgive sins. And so here's what happens. Jesus says to the religious people there that you may know the Son of Man, speaking of himself, has authority to forgive sins. And then he heals the man and sends him out walking. Jesus has the authority to forgive sins. We sin against God. That's why he has to forgive us. So he alone can have the authority to forgive sins. Jesus came as mighty God. But only that... Isaiah tells us he's also the everlasting father. In other words, who Jesus is is why we can trust God as our heavenly father. When one of his disciples, Philip, says, Jesus, if you just show us the father, we'll be content. We just want to see what God the father's like. Here's what Jesus says. Jesus said to him, have I been, to you so long, been with you so long that you still don't know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the father. How can you say show us the father? Later on in the same chapter, in John chapter 14, Jesus promises his disciples, 
I will not leave you orphans. In other words, you won't be fatherless. I will come to you, Jesus says. Yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. And because I live, you also will live. In other words, Jesus is predicting not only his death, but his resurrection and hinting at the sending of his spirit that he did on the day of Pentecost. He's the everlasting father. He's the reason why we can know God is our heavenly father and we can trust that he's with us wherever we go. Not only that, Isaiah says to us that he's the prince of peace. In other words, all that Jesus has done guarantees this future of peace and prosperity that we all want. Isaiah would say later on in Isaiah chapter 53, speaking of the Messiah, he would say, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we were healed. That chastisement is speaking of the cross, where Jesus would die for our sins to bring peace with us and the God that we've sinned against. In fact, Jesus would, or uh, one of Jesus' closest followers, Peter, would write about this in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Jesus, he writes, Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that is on the cross, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, we have been healed. He's the Prince of Peace. Now, with all this, it's important for us to think about that, 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 you know, this doesn't mean that Christmas Day still can't be a bit stressful. This doesn't mean that every day is going to be wonderful. But it, what it does mean is that the, 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 what we celebrate, the person we celebrate on Christmas Day, this Jesus, this wonderful counselor, this mighty God, this everlasting Father, this Prince of Peace, he is who he is, and therefore his promises are his promises forever. Because as the Bible says plainly, he never changes. See, the Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever, which means the best part of Christmas, Jesus, we can experience him every day. My prayer for all of us this 2022 is that we would know this Jesus and we would grow in this Jesus for this time and forever. God bless you. May we all be filled with the knowledge of his will in the new year. Bye. Bye. Merry Christmas, everyone, from the House family. May the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you in 2022. Love from the Watsons. Merry Christmas from the Hubbards. Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Merry Christmas. And a happy new year from, from the, the Arthurs. Arthurs. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Good! Merry Christmas! From Joshua, Lydia, and Rory! <laughs> Merry Christmas from, from the, the Deans! And every blessing for 2022, keep your eyes on Jesus! Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and, and a Happy New, new Year! year. We've enjoyed our times of fellowship with you throughout 2021. And we would uh, both like to wish you a happy Christmas and a good new year. And we look forward to seeing you again in 2022. From Andy and Liz. Merry Christmas. And a happy 2022. Love from the Browns. <laughs>